All right, so today, as Jonathan said, we're going to be talking about the D-series scales. Uh, this encompasses the D15, D30, D60, which are the same exact scale with just different capacities, uh, then also the DM15, which is the same scale, uh, but except for it's a 15-pound scale like the D15 is, uh, but it will also weigh in pounds or ounces, where the other ones are pounds or kilograms. But we're talking about the same exact function, it looks the same, acts the same, just different capacities, and then the one does ounces. So what we want to do here is the, the D-series scales have been around for a while, so it's not like it's a brand new product for us like some of the training we've been doing recently. Um, just, we want to kind of familiar, re-familiarize ourselves with what's going on with these scales. Um, we're going to take a look today at how the D-series compares to like the PC counting scales and even the DL. The DLs are kind of in a world of their own, but there are some similarities, some differences there. And ultimately, just want to get a better understanding of what the end user is going to go through when they receive the scale. Um, that kind of helps from a marketing standpoint, from a tech support standpoint, from a service standpoint. Everybody um, can benefit from knowing what, the, what that end user is going to go through. Kind of a general overview, um, these are the two views. We have the operator view and the customer view. So the person using the scale obviously is going to be able to push keys, things like that. But then if there's a customer present, they can see what's going on as well. As I mentioned, we've got uh, three different capacities, 15, 30, 60 pounds, um, DM15, same scale, just does ounces. But this is the scale we're talking about today. That's one, these are one of the scales that we actually don't get a whole lot of technical support calls on. Um, they're very basic, so it's a lot of our price competing scales. It's like, how do I do this? That's usually not an issue with this scale. It's very basic, and we'll see some of that operation here in just a bit. Um, right out of the box, the scale and the platform. It's interesting they ship them separated. Uh, that way, if the scale or if the box gets dropped or something like that, it's not as likely to damage the load cell. Get a hard copy of the manual. A lot of our scales ship with just a digital copy. Uh, so that's something that makes it kind of user friendly. It also comes with the AC adapter required to use the scale. Going to get into some of the comparisons between the D series and the other price computing scales that we have. Uh, visually, you can see that like the DL series on the far uh, far right there, kind of all its own. It's got more displays. It's a whole different animal. It's actually very similar. Um, as far as the layout to the PC series, the ones that we make here. Um, and but you can see here we've got some quick keys in the middle, we've got the display. One interesting thing is um, of our price computing scales, the D series is the only one that has an LCD display. The other ones have LED displays. Now, if you have somebody that's uh, like a farmer's market where they're outside, it's bright shining sun, the LCD is going to show up a lot better than the LED displays. LED displays would. So just kind of to compare the different ones, like I said, um, three displays on the D-Series and the PC-Series. We have weight, we have the unit price, and we have the total price. Uh, the DLs also have a window for tear weight. We don't, have, we don't see that tear weight on the other two, but uh, we are able to see what's going on. The size, there's actually not a lot of difference in size. Um, when I started to look at this, I was like, oh, the DL scales are huge. Well, they're a little taller, but that's about it. Um, um, for the most part, you can see, I mean, there's maybe an inch or so difference, a couple of dimensions, but nothing nothing too radical. The D series, along with the DM, and the PC series both have 100 PLUs, essentially, 99 for the D series. Uh, we have 14 quick keys, just make it a little easier, a little quicker for the operators to use um, with the scale, bring up those prices. One of the big things, I think I already mentioned it, is that the D and DM scales um, can be operated off of a battery. Uh, so if somebody has, like I mentioned earlier, like a farmer's market, you know, you don't want to have a generator connected just to run your scale, or you don't want to try to run a plug into a power inverter in a vehicle, something like that. They can just unplug it, um, bring it out to the site, and run it off a battery. Actually, just out of curiosity, um, the manual, I don't remember what the manual says as far as the number of hours, but I did let it run over a weekend. I plugged it, or unplugged it on Friday, came in Monday morning, it was still going strong. So. 
Correct. All that's included with the scale, um, AC adapter and the battery, all that good stuff. As far as printing, this is the new feature of the scale, the one part of the reason we're kind of rehashing what we're doing with the D-Series. Um, it does have one label. We'll see that on the next slide. And um, The printer is separate, just like the PC series. The PC, you can do a little bit of customizing on the label. You can put a header on there. I think there's maybe one other thing you can change. Uh, but with the D-Series, it's kind of one label, and that's it. The big thing that everybody always wants to know is how much does it cost? <laughs> so the, the list prices on these, you can see there's a huge difference there. Uh, but again, the D-Series is a very basic scale. But basic isn't always a bad thing. It's easy to set up. It's easy to use. This is what the label looks like. Now, I was just curious one day, so I plugged in how, how many digits it would take. So uh, the unit price and the total price will go up to the thousands of digits. I doubt anybody's ever going to use those, but it's interesting to know that it's there. Uh, a typical label is going to be like what you see in the bottom left. Uh, you know, it's $1.45 a pound, five pounds, 719 total price. The serial port is for printing only. Uh, we've had a few calls where people are asking, how do I send this weight or this price to my cash register? You don't. Um, so they, they want to hook up to the serial port. Can't do that. It's for printing only. Can't stress that enough. It uses the 71000025 cable, which is this handy black cable here. They order one. This is what they're going to get. I got this one out of stock just for this purpose. What's great is there's really no setup required. A lot of our other scales, you've got to go in, tell it that you are printing out of the serial port, um, you know, tell it some different settings to make that work, uh, serial port settings. With this, it's really plug and play. It actually plugs in right here on the bottom. Uh, this is where the AC adapter plugs in printer plugs in right next to it. Cable runs out the side. Let the printer come on. And this, this is just like they came out of the box. So I'll go through some of these operations in a moment, but and it prints. It's a little funny because I just was messing with it right before I came over here. But. That's interesting. Okay, I'll have to line that up in a minute. But straight out of the box, it will print, prints a good label. As far as replacement parts, to my knowledge, these are the only replacement parts we have. Uh, an AC adapter, the battery, and the printer, um, extra labels for the printer. Probably the battery, um, at least as far as calls that have been filtered through tech support, the battery is probably the thing that needs to get replaced the most often. Anything else has to come into the factory for service, and we would handle it from there, whether we would give a replacement or try to make a repair ourselves. So that's kind of the background of what the D-Series scales do. Uh, we compared them and contrasted a little bit. What I want to get to now is some of the operations. The very basic scale, we've already kind of seen that. The procedures are no less basic. That's one of the really great things about the scale. Um, the most basic function is just simply hand keying in a price. So let's say I put my weight on the scale and it's $7.42 a pound. It comes up one pound, uh, 742. And all I have to do is hit print, and there's my label, that basic, basic label. Also, if you want to use a tear weight, you can do that as well. So let's say I put my weight on there, and actually, let me do this. Let's say this is my tear weight. The weight goes to zero. Let's say that's the product I'm weighing. Procedure's the same. Press print, and it prints the label. Not anything complicated about the procedure, which is probably why we don't get a whole lot of phone calls on them.
because most of the calls that we do get as far as tech support on our price computing scales is how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I enter this? Why isn't my scale you know, operating properly? This is so basic that we just don't get a lot of those calls. We can do it, uh, we can have a stored PLU, which can be done a couple of different ways. Uh, let's say I want to store PLU number 50. Press the PLU program key. I'll do number 50. Enter, and it comes up and it prompts me for the unit price. Let's say it's $7.21. Then it prompts me for a tear weight. We can have a stored tear weight there. In this case, I'll do 0 0.05. So I just press 5, enter, and that is now stored in the scale. So to recall that, I'll press the PLU button, 5, 0. Comes up with the unit price, comes up with my stored tear weight. Put my weight on the scale. Print, and it prints. We can also use the quick keys. The setup is very similar to what we just saw with uh, PLU 50. Let's say I want to use PLU number 4. So I'll press the program PLU key. I'll press PLU 4, the quick key. Comes up and asks me for the unit price. Let's say 367. Enter, tear weight. I'm not going to use a tear weight for this one. So now I just have to press PLU 4. Brings up my price per pound. There it is. Print. And it prints a label. It does not matter if you put the weight on before or after you enter the PLU number. Um, so if somebody enters their PLU, it's like, oh, I didn't put my weight on yet. It's not a big deal. Uh, it can be done either way. One thing to notice, each time I take the weight off of the scale, it clears off that PLU, whether it was a hand-keyed unit price or a stored PLU with a quick key, doesn't matter, it clears all of that off. Um, when we do clear that off, some people don't like that. Some people want to use that same PLU, so that's what the prepack mode is for. So we can press the prepack key, PLU4 brings up that PLU, so now I can print that. When I take that off, the tear weight, if I was using one, and the unit price are still there, I can put it on again, however many times I want, print off as many labels as I want, and then when I'm done, we press the clear key, clears all of that off, and we can go on to our next PLU. Does it print barcodes? This does not print barcodes. The Yes. Um, the DL series, you can customize the barcode. The PC series has a, has a single barcode format that it uses. There's a, Yep, just that very basic label uh, says thank you, has the unit price, the weight, and the total price, and the PLU number if you use one. And that's it. The calibration for the scale, uh, we will walk through that. Uh, the calibration seal, I hope I don't mess up your camera too much here. It's right here in the front. There's a, there's a screw with a hole in it and then a loop right next to it. Uh, that's where the calibration seal will be if it's a certified scale. So we remove the screw. This little access plate comes off. And there are four pins exposed. And we want to short together the two right pins just using anything metallic. I just use the screw. It works just fine. Is that a good angle for you, Tom? So it brings us into the setup mode. To cycle through the setup mode, we press the prepack key. Until the display says cal. It says cal no. We do want to go into the setup or to the calibration, so I press tear and then prepack. And then prepack again. and prepack again, and it prompts me for a weight. This weight is in kilograms. So uh, somebody that uses the scale of pounds, it won't work, it has to be used in kilograms. So I'm gonna be using a 25 pound weight to calibrate the scale, which is 11.34 kilograms. So that's what I'm gonna punch in. 
one, one, three, four. Prepack. And it has a zero on the bottom line. And as soon as I put this weight on the scale, that number increases. Press the prepack key again. It says cal at the bottom. It's asking me if I want to save. Press the prepack key. It exits setup. The scale reboots. And when it comes back up, I'll put my weight on the scale. It should say 25 pounds. There it is, 25 right on the money. So there are a couple of kind of quirks with the scale. They're not necessarily bad things, just things to keep in mind. Uh, when we're editing a PLU, we actually don't edit it. We completely overwrite what is already there. So that PLU number 50 that I did at first, so if I go program PLU, 5-0, enter, the unit price that comes up is zero. So I've completely already wiped out what PLU number 50 was. A uh, way to get around that is if somebody says, you know, somebody doesn't like that because the program key is not locked out or anything like that. If somebody doesn't like that, they can have a spreadsheet that has all their PLUs on it. Uh, something to, just in case, they can go back and re-enter it. It's a really easy process, but easy process also means that it's easy for somebody to get in and mess something up. Uh, the backlight, you guys may have already noticed, uh, whenever it's at zero, it goes off. But if I put this weight on the scale, this one pound weight, and leave it on there, the backlight will stay on as long as there's weight on the scale. But as soon as it comes off, it times out, and it will go off. There it is. So I wanted to touch on who might be using this scale. I don't know about you guys, but for me a lot of times when I think price computing, I think produce, apples and veggies and stuff like that. Hardware stores can use this for nuts and bolts. Uh, pet stores can use it for weighing dog biscuits. Um, I mentioned earlier like a farmer's market, outdoor weighing, uh, the LCD display and the battery operation are huge keys there. You know, just very those that have very basic operations, they don't need a barcode to scan and anything like that. Um, the, this scale will work great for those kinds of operations. Do you guys have any questions? That's really about all there is to do with the D series scales. One, when you go into the PLU, the program, you put it all that, put out all the old information. Is there any way to lock those? So people don't mistake when they get in there and put them out. Okay, so you're asking if there's a way to. Um, save the PLU so that way when you do go into it, it won't, um, it, it doesn't clear it out when you go into it. Now, there, that is actually not, there is not a way to do that. A uh, way to get around that would be for somebody to have a list of their PLUs there, like an Excel spreadsheet somewhere. That way, just in case, like you said, somebody gets into it on accident because the, the program is not locked out either. 